Uh, Coach, yesterday just uh, we were talking a lot about the communications. Yeah. Um, can you, you know, for the people, I kind of know what, what we're talking about there, but how important is that communication, getting to the line on time and, you know, being able to see things and maybe change things if you have to for Mark, for, uh, for, for Desmond. Desmond? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a huge part of the job to operate a quarterback. Um, you know, there's obviously some things we, we all got to clean up in the passing game, but he operated really well. You know, even the times where it got loud, when you're, you know, you're seeing rookies and, and uh, he was able to, to get us to get a set, you know, even use some of the, the hurry up counts uh, and didn't rattle him. Now, there's some other things, you know, obviously we will continue to work on that, that we can we can help and he'll continue to improve on. But for that part, d I thought he did a nice job. And then what are some of the, you know, uh, strides you saw him make in his first game, 74 plays, first time out? Yeah, you know, and he, we had a lot of confidence going into there, and in, in a lot of that, I, I would say the way he did operate. Now, there were some things early, it's just natural. You know, the first time he'd been in a pocket, you know, in a couple months, and it's a good veteran defense, and the way they play aggressive, um, you know, he, he, I thought early on, like I said yesterday after the game, and he was a little amped up, and you could see it the way he, you know how quickly he was moving. And once he settled down, I thought he did nice jobs. So, you know, especially in some critical downs, converting third down, converting fourth down. Uh, but there's other things we'll continue to work on that you know he saw for the first time. And uh, you know, big big part of it as a young player is not to repeat the same mistakes. And as he moved into the game, how did he flow on his progressions and so forth? Yeah, I thought he did a nice job there. Um, you know, some of the stuff where they, they make it in New Orleans, you know, that's, like I said, it's a well-built defense. They, they're they going to make you, you earn it you know, with that front and the way that they cover and, and you know, they're aggressive, a lot of press. Um, so guys working to get open and other things, you know, moving the pocket. Um, I thought, you know, he progressed pretty well. Um, as always, there's things we got to clean up, but uh, the moment wasn't too big for him. You know, even coming back off the third down and then getting to the fourth down, um, Able to hang in there. There was no, he had poise, and obviously we all know what happened after that. But so there were some signs of encouragement there. When you talk about, you know, Desmond coming out too amped and the emotions and everything, he talked about that too. After that first, maybe second drive, did you have to go over and say anything to him to kind of settle him in, or was he able to do that on his own? Well, it's a it's a team effort, you know, as your head coach, play caller, the communication we have from upstairs, as you're, you know, going between series. I mean, there's a lot of communication that goes on and. And Dave's down there on the sideline with him, and Dave does a nice job. You know, there's a couple times I may pop over there, talk to the quarterback for a second, and but there's a lot of communication as we streamline it. You know, he knew, and Dave did a good job, and they talked through it, settled down, and then as a play caller, you try to you know try to set him down with the screen just to get one to go through the hoop. Um, and I thought, you know, we did. You know, he got in there, and then we were able to convert to third down. Um, yeah, that's natural, but uh, again, yeah, there's a lot of things to work on, but there were some encouraging signs as well that one of the major differences between the college game and the pro game is in the pocket. Mm -hmm. How did you feel like, you know, you talk about this is the first time he's, Desmond's been in a pocket since August. How did you evaluate kind of that part of the game? Well, I, I, you know, we talked about he certainly settled down. You know, you get a feel for it. I mean, there's just different. I mean, those things collapse quicker. The guys that rush in this league and um, – the amount of time sometimes, and that's not a knock on the college, it's a natural flow. I mean, you, you look at that front around New Orleans, or really most weeks, say, okay, we'll have a great challenge Saturday in Baltimore, but it's the timing of it. You know, the, the people at their at their feet, sometimes, I mean, they have like five Mississippi to throw in college and there's access and whatnot. So, uh, especially when there's a huge talent disparity. So I think that's that plays a factor into it, but I thought he has a natural feel. And a lot of it's a credit to our line. I thought our line played really well yesterday certainly in the run game, but I thought we had some good good pockets, not only in drop back, but in our, in our play action game. And uh, we just got to make sure we continue to, to make progress in the passing game because we, we need more production, we need more points. In terms, in terms of when he ran, did, uh, did, did you like those choices when he chose to get out and try to do things with his legs? Yeah, I mean, some of those, I mean, those are by design. I mean, I thought, you know, what you don't want to do is just, you know, make a guy just sitting right in the same spot. You know, they can make it hard on, especially a young guy. But you're able to run the ball like that, and you can change the launch points. Um, certainly, you've got it. You'll take a six, seven-yard gain. You know, Scott, all day. 
you know, but, but that's what you saw as athleticism. That's why he fits. If you want to be this kind of offense that can play in misdirection and, and run, uh, you know, the movement passes and different play actions, uh, you know, even the stuff, the little things where some young quarterbacks, they struggle when they turn their back to them. Most of these guys have grown up now playing in the shotgun, but they, you know, the way the high school offenses and then even the 707, they, they don't have a lot of experience turning their back and when you snap back around, it changed. But where I saw it was encouraging, he did it a few times. He hit Drake on, on one on a crossing route, ripped his head around. He was actually hot, stayed in there. You know, little things like that that were signs of encouragement. A little bit of housekeeping stuff. Any update on Caleb Huntley? Yeah, it's going to be uh, – he'll be out. So, um, I actually telling David on the way down here, one of the most unusual things I've seen, he, he, you know, he injured his Achilles uh, the second play. He didn't go down. Right, yeah. That he stayed in there, and um, I don't know how the hell he did it, to be honest. And he went in there and played a snap, actually made a block in pass protection, and then he jogged off the field. So I was asking him this morning. I said, I don't think I've ever seen that. He said, well, I knew you wanted to go no huddle early, and I didn't want to come out. I'm like, yep, you were uh, injured here. <laughs> so you could have gone down. Um, I, I, again, I don't know how the hell he did it. Uh, you know, it's I feel awful for him. Uh, he's a great – Great uh, person, uh, guy we've had in our program, and you know I know he'll attack the rehab, but I, I do want to put that out. I don't know how the hell he did it. Is, is, it, is it a rupture? Is it, like, is it one of the bad Achilles injuries that's going to have him out for a long time? I, mean, yeah, I think any time, any time you're going to need to have surgery on your Achilles. I don't know the exact medical term. I don't want to say something wrong or uh, whatnot, but um, I, again, I don't know how he would have done that. To see the way that he took advantage of his opportunities early on, and he became a, a pretty productive runner mm -hmm. for you guys. Um, you know, like to, to see him go kind of practice squad and being cut and then emerge. You know, like what was it that, that you saw that kind of allowed him to take advantage of his opportunities? That's kind of poorly worded, but yeah, he made a lot of progress. You know, and coming in here and um, you know learning the the expectations of you know what we expect from guys in the program and. Um, Nothing for Caleb in his life has come easy. You know, he's a guy that's – all he knows how to do is work and works extremely hard. Uh, persistence, you know, all those things that you look for, those qualities that that we value. Um, Caleb's got them, you know, and it, it's a credit to him and, and how you stay with it. He's improved a lot as a player, and I'm sure he'll attack this rehab the same way. Any update on Dean and if he's going to be able to, like, when he'll be able to come back and coach? Or yeah, I mean, he he, he was in here today. He's obviously um, that was a. I'm, I don't know if you guys have seen the video. David showed me the video of it. First time I'd saw it, seen it this morning. Obviously, we'll continue to monitor him, and we'll see how the week goes. Um, I'm just glad he's all right. On the running backs, uh, Tyler Algier just seems to get better as the season goes on. And for a rookie who's been through, you know, all the combine stuff, the draft stuff, the OTA stuff, how do you, you know, describe like, what he's, how he's been able to do that this year? Well, I think uh, to Tyler's credit, I mean, we were excited about, about him coming out of BYU. I'm a really smart player, instinctual. A lot of things you saw on the tape at BYU have translated. He's, hard, he's a hard guy to bring down. He's a tough runner. He's got instinct. Um, you know, not having to take every single carry early on. You know, you're splitting it, you know, whether it was with CP early or even Caleb. And um, I think that helps too. To, as you can spread out the carries, uh, where a guy's not sitting there at 300 carries right now, certainly can help any player, and let alone a rookie. But he was very productive yesterday, and he has been. Is that BJ Taylor an option for y'all, the practice squad running back? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly, but you know, we've we've actually been a little heavy with running backs because Avery does so many different things for us, and and CP plays multiple roles. We'll have to look at it. D. Lev wants to put the game plan in, whether we carry an extra backup. Um, certainly, we got other guys that can move the football uh, in the run game, but we we'll just have to see how the plan is. Desmond was going to Drake often uh, in the game yesterday. Is that something you like to see? I'm not trying to force an error one way or the other here, but just kind of curious as to how you. Uh, how you perceive what you saw in the race today? I think you saw, you know, a guy winning a lot of his matchups. So, yeah, they obviously – there's a chemistry there. Um, you know, a few times where, you know, that's what happens sometimes in sports. You see it all over where a guy has a lot of trust and, you know, he went to him hell or high water. There's other times where, you know, he'll learn from the read and maybe say, hey, I need to go here instead. But uh, they certainly were pretty productive yesterday together. 
how do you coach Dre through this? You know, he said this is the second fumble uh, in a situation like this this year. Or just well, they're different. You know, I mean, it's a fine line. I mean, you you know, the guy's a aggressive football player. Um, you know, the one in against the Chargers here. Um, you know, he's going out and Khalil Mack is a you know, he just ripped it from him, you know, a little bit different, you know, as he was going there and you we worked the hell out of ball security, we'll continue to, to look at it and, and you know learn from it. So a little bit different. I mean I know the result was the same. This one, you know, obviously caught it, converted the fourth down right in the middle, went to tackle him the way it is, you know, and understand when you're traffic. There's things you can learn from him. And they like I said, I mean the ball obviously popped out and popped up and uh yeah, we'll continue to work. But but in terms of mindset, you know, you He's such a competitor, and you got to understand that it, I'm going to continue to call his number. We're not uh, down on him. We obviously, nobody loves what happened with the result, but uh, Drake London, he's wired the right way, and we'll continue to, to work and learn from, uh, learn from those mistakes. But I got all the faith in the world. Uh, when is it okay to gamble on, on, on a deep ball? Like uh, Richard saw that when he tried to go get it. Yeah, he just misjudged it. You know, he turned him around and. As he's playing it, uh, you know, that's a tough lesson to learn. You know, he misjudged it going under it, trying to back. Um, that's kind of, I mean, that's what happened. Everybody saw it, so. You said last night that going to Baltimore on Saturday is a yeah. good test for, for Desmond. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of when you look at these, these first two weeks, New Orleans, short week, sure. Baltimore, it's almost kind of like a trial by fire for him. Why do sometimes trial by fires make sense for some of these rookies to kind of just get out there? Yeah, it's like you're throwing in the deep end, right? Yeah. Is that, uh, is that still appropriate? Can I say that? Is that, is that going to get me canceled by somebody? <laughs> um, jumping in the deep end, all right. But that, they're not throwing them in the deep end. We're asking them to jump in the deep end. But uh, in all seriousness, you know, I mean, that's what the NFL is. I and mean, there's, there's hard matchups every week. Um, you know, you don't have any. Gimme's on the schedule that you pay a school that you hope that uh, different talent level, you know, comes in there, but that's not the NFL. So they're all hard, uh, but this will be another good, good challenge for them. Short week, you know, we had a lot of time to prepare for the Saints game, and now you've got a, uh, one last day and another road environment against a you know, playoff caliber team that's, that's played, uh, you know, whoever's been out there, the last 20 some odd years, they've had a good defense, and we know it'll be tough. It'll be a different challenge in New Orleans, so it'll be it'll be good for us. We need to go get a win. Uh, we need to see progress, and I, I'm confident that we will see progress. This is kind of a, a, a bigger picture question, but so many of these guys that we're talking about here are first year guys and right. second year guys who are making positive contributions. Do you feel like this young foundation is growing and getting? I don't know, deeper and more stable as you continue to kind of stack things up? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's frustrating when you lose. I mean, there's no moral victories. I've said that before. But you can still be encouraged by the progress. Yeah. And um, we know, you know, the objective is to win, and that'll never change. And and uh, so you're getting a lot of these these experiences, these young guys, and you can try to tell them, Difference with the NFL and college is you're going to be in these one possession games now more than ever. And we've been in these, we've lived in pressure situations all year. And it's good for us. It's good for us all. Now we need to come out the other side again. Uh, you know, just look at the last month and a half. You know, you get, the, get these games, you get the charter game at home, and you got a double fumble to end that one. Uh, you know, the other things, obviously, you know, Carolina. Chicago, and then you get into to Washington, and you get the, the ball and the chance that it gets tip picked, and then Bitter, you get a chance. Uh, you know, we, I'm just saying they're, they're living in these pressure moments, these situations that you try to simulate a practice that you can't make up. They're they're going through the first time. Now we need to come out the other side and continue to work to do that. And it, it's frustrating not to win, but I'm not discouraged because of because of that, Scott. These guys, I mean, there's there's, there's nothing more valuable than on the job training. Uh, yeah, Coach, with uh, what, with Lamar's, uh, I guess uh, I saw it last week, and I haven't updated where he might be back for this game. Uh, but they don't look like the, the other quarterbacks run the same stuff, it looks like. But I don't know he runs it up here. Well, I mean, it's not fair to honor anybody. You know, Lamar's on a different level. There's one guy that almost 
unless you're playing him, uh, he's one of the most exciting players to watch. You talk about it any time he has a, a – it's rare when you have a player that any time he has a ball in his hands can score from anywhere. We've seen him do it. Uh, I've seen it up close and personal. We, uh, when I was in Tennessee, we were some really big games with him in the 19 and 20 season. Um, he's an electric football player, D-Led, so that's not a shot at anybody. There's only one Lamar Jackson. And you saw it at Louisville. He's done the same thing in the National Football League. So, you know, we've got to prepare for him, see what happens. I'm sure the narrative all week, they'll say he's going to play and probably won't know until Saturday. So, we got to prepare for him. And I've seen um, young quarterbacks lean on a receiver before early until they, you know, got comfortable to move mm -hmm. it around. Is, is, is that encouraged? Are you, you just, um, you know, is that uh, just part of it? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of it, um, certainly, you know, Drake's been productive and he's a, he's a good good player. And, you know, it's a fine line. I mean, you, you develop that chemistry. Uh, I don't think you want to force it into bad looks. Mm -hmm. Because, like I always say, the defense has to say, too. So sometimes a guy's double covered, you know, it's a, it could be a risky throw in there. Um, there's other times you want to make sure he's going through the right reads, understands, you know, the concept of the play because we have other guys we can get the football to as well. So, uh, yeah, to your point. You know, you've seen it before. There's a there's a there's a risk reward in it, but we we don't want to force things into to bad looks.